club, which is a very pretty and very poisonous plant. It came from Europe and was brought over to the Americas in the 1700s and it escaped. Only one of these plants can produce up to 5,000 seeds, so it, it spreads pretty effectively. If we look at the leaves, they're elongated and lance-shaped. They're a pretty green color on top and underneath it's kind of a gray woolly color. They are alternate and they exist in a spiral around the stalk and we have these gorgeous flowers. Sometimes they're purple or pink or white and they're tubular so all of the petals are fused into just one of these little tubes and inside the, the petal are these gorgeous spots that help the, uh, the pollinators you can see one right there, figure out how to get inside the flower. You'll often see hummingbirds drinking from them too. Each plant has about 20 to 80 of these flowers on them and they're kind of drooping and they hang on just one side of the stalk. The name comes from probably a confusion of an Anglo-Saxon word that meant uh, bells hung on an arch support, which was fox's glue, um, which somehow eventually became foxglove. This plant is a biennial, so the first year you'll only see a rosette of leaves on the ground, and then the second year they put up this gorgeous stock of flowers. This plant is toxic and it can cause death, so don't mess with it. It contains cardiac glycosides, and these increase the strength of heart muscle contraction, but they diminish the rate. So if too much of it is consumed, your heart can stop. So really, I'm not kidding when I say I don't mess with it. It's currently used in modern pharmaceuticals, and they're able to separate out the compounds so that they can be measured uh, and you don't have the, the danger of actually killing people. It was first documented in 1775 by a Scottish doctor named William Withering. And he had a patient who was suffering from dropsy, which is an old-fashioned way of saying edema. And edema can be caused by heart failure. Uh, and he was not able to do anything for this patient, so the family ended up consulting a local herbalist who gave them a concoction that contained foxglove. And the patient recovered, and Dr. Withering got really excited and researched it for the next 10 years and then wrote a paper on it. He found that the therapeutic dose of the plant was very close to the toxic dose. So I don't know if any patients died in his experimenting, but uh, he, he was able to determine the amount that would help a person and not kill them. Dr. Withering's other claim to fame is that he also is said to have the very first water closet in Birmingham. Quite exciting. It's said that fairies live where foxgloves are. Duh. And an old tale says that fairies, uh, bad fairies, gave the flowers to foxes so they could put them on their paws and sneak into the chicken coops to steal the chickens. So, a beautiful flower. And if you need to steal any chickens, you have the gloves. Mm -hmm.